Okay, everybody. I appreciate you letting me switch things around a little bit. Um, I have always known to not keep a judge waiting. So um, I'm going to give you a very brief, hopefully, overview of the year. Uh, let's see. Whoops. There we go. As you all know, my initiatives this year have been based around service, education, and leadership. And I want to just go over a few of the milestones that we've had. First, our military support initiative. As you know, we have accredited about 40 to 50 young lawyers to represent attorney or veterans on veteran benefits appeals. We also raised $60,139.80 for the Augusta Warrior Project, which I was very happy, along with Jack Long, uh, to present that check to the Augusta Warrior Project at Augusta Bar's Law Day. And I appreciate the Augusta Bar, uh, all the attorneys there, the young lawyers there, uh, for getting behind this from the very beginning. And I also appreciate everybody here on the Board of Governors who has supported this initiative. The succession planning program has been one of the more ambitious programs that I've had this year. And you've heard a little bit about that in the media recently. Um, you'll see in my report in your book a copy of the form as well as some articles. Rural lawyers, being a rural lawyer myself, uh, helping rural lawyers and planning into the future for access to justice, that's a real passion of mine. And I believe that the succession planning program, if it continues into the future, as I think it will with Jack Long, will continue to be a success. We opened this program on April 15th, put the form on the website, and that same day I actually happened to be at the bar and we got a phone call from an attorney who wanted to sign up right away and wanted to know what he had to do. I've since received several letters from attorneys around the state, older attorneys who are looking to transition out of the practice of law, um, but who have not found younger attorneys to, to come in and, and basically fill that niche in their community. And they've told me they've signed up for the program, um, and they've told me they were very excited about it. Uh, I have also talked to Stephanie Powell, who's the Dean of the Career Services Office at Mercer, and she's the coordinating contact for all five Georgia law schools, and have learned that um, each of the Georgia law schools have access to the information on how many students are looking at these postings and, and are getting engaged with these attorneys who are looking to transition out of the practice, and that the numbers are encouraging. Granted, we're only about two months into the program, um, so we are still in the very early stages, but we have attorneys in um, law firms and solo practices in the South uh, in fact, I believe one is in the Fitzgerald area, uh, but we also actually have an attorney or a law firm up in the Buckhead area who's looking to find an attorney, a young attorney, to transition his transactional practice to. So while it is hopefully going to bring attorneys into the rural areas, it's not confined to rural law firms and rural practices. So I think that the idea or the prospects for success of this program are pretty limitless. If you have any questions about it, you can find the form in the book, but it's also on the website. I really encourage you to talk about this with your, the attorneys in your individual circuits. And then, of course, I have the Leadership Professional Development uh, Initiative. We've had the Next Step Institute, which we had our second installment of that yesterday. Uh, we had a wonderful, uh, actually we had three different panels, one on being becoming in-house counsel or working with in-house counsel. Also we had a, a wonderful presentation by immediate past president uh, Daryl Sutton. He presented it during the convocation on aging um, on how to basically plan for long-range planning, disability insurance, the idea of, of instead of waiting until the very end of your law practice to begin thinking about um, transitioning out and how you're going to handle the possibility you might become disabled, think about that on the front end. So we had a great program on that as well as just a tips and um, tool, but actually a toolkit for young lawyers who are interested in getting started on their own firm. And it was a wonderful program yesterday. I think Jack is going to plan on continuing that into the future. And of course, the legal food frenzy recently ended. Um, I was very proud to, to learn that we had, we collected the largest amount of food that we'd ever collected, uh, the equivalent of 1.18 million pounds of food, 
which is a 3.5% increase from last year. And I appreciate everyone here on this Board of Governors who participated and who encouraged young attorneys and other attorneys, firms, law schools. I appreciate your, your getting the word out and, and helping increase the amount that we were able to raise. It's really making a difference, and I look forward to seeing what we do in the future. A couple of other milestones. We've had the most, I guess the one thing that I am very pleased about but didn't really know to expect was the involvement. We had the largest turnout for our meetings that we've ever had. Um, in fact, the meeting, as you know, we have joint meetings with the Board of Governors at the annual meeting and at the mid-year meeting. Outside of those meetings, uh, we had the largest non-joint meeting that we've ever had in New Orleans, Louisiana back in the spring. We had 104 registrants. Um, at the mid-year meeting back in January in Atlanta, we had, I think, around 160, 170 participants. So I am just floored but so pleased by the attendance and the involvement. We've had more people uh, who've been involved in committees who are getting interested. and. and and Jack, actually, I know he was been, he's been working on his appointments, and he has the very good problem to have that there are way too many qualified people that want to be involved, and he's trying to figure out where to place them all. So I am really excited about the involvement level that we have. We also have, uh, through the ABA, that one of my goals was to make sure we had a national presence, and we've completed and met that goal. We've had full delegations at all of the ABA meetings, and we've actually attended some of the uh, spring and fall meetings that we've never attended before, at least not since I've been involved. So I'm very pleased with that. Another milestone, of course, is the Plessy v. Ferguson and professionalism CLE that we had back in the spring at the, or at the spring meeting. Um, I can't say enough about that. I know that I, I mentioned it during a, the spring meeting at Brasstown, but I want to thank again Avarita Hansen for organizing that along with Morgan Clemens, who is our co-chair of the YLD Minorities in the Profession Committee. That was an outstanding program, and I found my notes from it the other day. I don't often take notes at a CLE, but I took notes and I wrote down quotes because it really was a program that um, was unforgettable. Lastly, I just want to say thank you. Winston Churchill stated that if you have knowledge, let others light their candles with it. And this year, I have been the grateful recipient of others' knowledge who have been gracious enough to let me light my candle with it. Since this is my last time as the Wildy president, where I'll be able to address this body. Can you hand me that handkerchief? I'm sorry. I, I didn't think I used to cry, but I think I do it all the time now. Um, I would like to thank a few people, and I hope you'll, I know we're short on time, but I hope you'll grant me this privilege. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank everyone at the State Bar of Georgia who has gone out of their way to help me um, and to help make this year a success. I could list something that each bar employee has done, and I do believe every single bar employee has helped me this year. Um, but that would take even more time that we don't have. So I will acknowledge just a few of the bar employees who have gone above and beyond to help me. Uh, first and foremost being Mary McAfee, who's actually been sending me texts wanting to know when I'm going to get to the luncheon so that I can introduce the judge. And Danielle Buteau, who is our new uh, administrative assistant for the YLD. Sarah Cool, Jennifer Mason, and the entire communications department. Linton Johnson, Michelle Garner, Thomas Worthy, Norma Zoller. Sharon Bryant, Jeff Davis, Paula Frederick, and I'm leaving people out, but I just want to tell you how much I appreciate every single one of you. I also want to thank the members of the uh, bench on the Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court. I've enjoyed getting to know you all and getting to work with you. You've all been wonderful mentors to me, and I, I truly respect the, the relationship between the State Bar and we are lucky to have the judges that we have there who are so interested and care so much about the bar and also the young lawyers. I want to thank Attorney General Sam Owens, who couldn't be with us this weekend, but who gave me a wonderful opportunity to work with him on the food frenzy, and it's been an outstanding opportunity to get to know him a little bit better, and also he's been so supportive of young lawyers, and I appreciate that. I want to thank the members, you, I want to thank you, the members of the Board of Governors and the Executive Committee, 
because I just can't tell you how much I have appreciated your friendship, your advice, and everything you've done for me. To do this job, however, it takes a lot of time away from my work in the office, which requires a lot of patience and support from a lot of people who you may never see at a bar meeting or an event, and that's why I want to thank a few of those people. I want to thank the attorneys and judges in my home circuit, the Ogeechee Judicial Circuit, as well as the bench and the bar of the Southern District of Georgia. These attorneys and judges have graciously worked with me and have made it possible for me to travel the state, the country, and even the world, as I recently got back from the ABA London sessions on Tuesday. Um, I appreciate also the bench and the bar of the surrounding circuits of the Atlantic, Eastern, and Middle circuits. Thank you to each of you. I know it's not been easy to have opposing counsel who is always gone and difficult to reach, but I appreciate you and I promise you I'm going back to work next week. Speaking of, I also want to thank my clients, who I don't think any of them are here today, but they have, for the most part, patiently waited for my return to the full-time practice of law. And I understand through my assistant that I will be meeting with each and every single one of them next week. <laughs> so there's no easing back into it. Finally, I want to thank the lawyers and staff of my law firm, Edinville Cox, Bruce, and Classens, who have carried on in my absence, making it possible for me to do this job. Most especially, I want to thank my partner, Susan Cox, who's also on the Board of Governors, and my partner and father, Gerald Edenfield, they have made it possible not only for me to do this job, but they have provided an extraordinary opportunity, an example of the kind of lawyer and bar leader that I want to be. And I also finally want to thank my family. They have supported me my entire life, and I am so fortunate to have them. You have met many of my extended family when they came to this meeting last year at Amelia Island uh, when I was sworn in. Uh, however, some of the family you meet and you see on a regular basis, like my dad and my mom, who's the most popular member of our family. Um, and they are here with me today. Um, mom, dad, raise your hand. I also want to recognize my sister and brother-in-law, Christy and Ed Piasta, who I recruited by force to head up my military support initiative and they've served on my board and they've done a wonderful job and I appreciate them. Lastly, I would be remiss if I didn't also acknowledge my Aunt Melvis Edenfield who is not here with me today, as well as her husband, my late uncle, <laughs> Judge Avant Edenfield who, as many of you know, served on the Southern District of Georgia bench since 1978. You may recall, please forgive me. You may recall that he swore me in as YLD president last year, and he also swore my dad in as state bar president in 2007. He and my aunt did not have children. So my sister and brother and I became their surrogate children. And because of the age difference between my dad and my uncle, they were actually more like the grandparents that we never got to know. More than being my uncle, however, he was my mentor. And apart from my parents, my most trusted advisor, in many of my initiatives this year came about through conversations I had with him. And it seems unbearably sad that he's not here with me today to share in the celebrations of all that we've accomplished through the YLT. But though he's not here in person, I know that he's here with us in spirit. And that's why I wanted to thank you, or thank him. Um, and lastly, since my uncle passed in May, I wanted to 
I, my family and I have been overwhelmed by your kind words and your support and your calls and your flowers and, and your cards. And I just want to say from the bottom of my heart how much I appreciate that, and how much we all appreciate that. And I can't tell you how much that has meant to us and how much that's helping us get through some very hard times. But that being said, I am very excited about the upcoming year with the YLD because I know Jack Long and he's got some great plans. And I hope you will join me tonight when I happily pass the gavel to him and hear all about what he has planned for the YLD this next year. Thank you so much for your support and I appreciate you more than I can say. Thank you. 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 Thank you.